good to see you. How are you? Good. You caught me doing my warm ups. Oh my goodness. Now yeah. you have to tell me that's, that's a huge instrument. I can't even see the whole thing. What instrument is that? And what family of instruments is it from? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a bass. It's a double bass. Um, it's an instrument that has a lot of names. It has a, it's called a, a double bass. It's called a contrabass. It's called a bass viol. It's called a string bass. It's called a, oh gee, acoustic bass. Um, it's called in slang, you call it a bull fiddle. You call it a stand-up bass. Uh, there's a lot of names. This instrument is it's amazing. Uh, you know, it's, but I call it a double bass and, uh, or just a bass. It's a bass. And, uh, and it, what's cool about it is it's, you know, they're old. They've been around for 400 years or more, and we still use them in many different musical genres. Wow. I feel like I've heard a lot of those musical sounds before. Uh, what types of genres or styles of music do you tend to play on the bass? You know, obviously classical, solo performance, jazz, bluegrass, country, rockabilly, <laughs> all this stuff. This is still expected. So what are some ways or types of sounds that you can play on the bass? Yeah, it's, it's a great instrument. It, it is, it's just, I just love the fact that we can, it's so versatile. And the sounds from the lows, you know, my lows. Some of these. these the, the luscious luscious sounds that we get the lows the highs you know we're we play it all we do it all that seems like a very very huge instrument is it tough to play and also, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm thinking about my fingers and when I've played on a string instrument before, like a ukulele or a guitar, um, do your fingers hurt a little bit from strumming or plucking, pulling on the strings? And it's challenging because it's so big, you know. Um, we make these big shifts and it's easy to miss. <laughs> If I miss by a millimeter, which is only like this much, it's noticeably out of tune. So we have to hear it and then and then practice getting there and the mechanics of it all. So I'm always teaching um, technique with the kids, with my students, because if we can't just do this, <laughs> keep our fingers in one spot, it's really hard to play anything. So you gotta have pads, calluses, if you will. I call them pads, because they're not really hard. It, your fingers get tough. And, uh, and that's how you can press the string down. Without the pads, it hurts. You press and it's like, ooh. I'm wondering, can you tell us a little bit more about what it takes to practice the bass? It looks fairly complicated. So you have to practice. And what I was doing when you first came on is just going. And if you notice when I play, my fingers don't lift up. I don't lift up my fingers very much. I keep them down. So when I move, they don't, I don't lift my fingers because I have to stay on the string. That's kind of what it's about. It's about this. The notes are in there somewhere. So what are some different
different things that you can do on your instrument. Can you play fast, slow? Is that easy to do? Can you give us a little bit of a demonstration? Yeah, and we can do anything on this instrument. We can play fast, we can play slow. And then this, I've been playing with a bow all this time. And by the way, we have two kinds of bows. This is a German bow, and this is called the frog, this part that we kind of hold on to. German bow is held underhand like this. So when I put the camera on the bow, you'll see. We hold it like that, underhand. And then French bows are a little smaller frog little shorter stick usually and the frog smaller and we hold it overhand like this so that's how we hold the french bow and they're you know it's once you get used to playing both of them it really doesn't matter anymore but you have to practice both of them so that's that's kind of important to know. So if anybody out there that's a bass player, it doesn't matter which bow you play, as long as you practice, <laughs> as, long as, you, as long as you work at it. I'm wondering, you, we've been able to hear so many wonderful sounds from you so far. Can you give us an example of something that has a dynamic contrast, the, the louds and the softs on your instrument? Is there something well, you right could- off the top of my head, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, we can play, we can play super soft. You know, I can, again, if I go to the, the, the bass solo from uh, Atello, from Verdi, so I gotta get that E string started. It's supposed to be super soft. loud. What drew you to play in symphony orchestra? Oh. Well, you know what? I decided I should take some lessons. So I went to Virginia Bodman. She taught at Michigan State from 1944 to 1984. She was a student of Fred Zimmerman, the great bassist who was in the New York Phil. And he taught at Juilliard. She was one of his students. And so I went to her in 1975. I think. And, and I already could, she could see that I could do this stuff because I was playing jazz. And I, I, I had my, my bag of licks. I didn't know pretty much what it was that I was doing, but I, I had some, I had facility. She saw that oh, and, she, <laughs> and I wasn't even student. I didn't really, I wasn't very academic in school. I wasn't, you know, I didn't study much, but she said, you should play in the orchestra because back then Michigan State needed bass players. So she threw me into the orchestra and I, could, I couldn't even read. You know, I have to laugh. I could kind of read, you know, I was working on it. I was working on it, but it was not, it was not second nature as if I had been reading uh, music like I had been reading English. Wow. I can definitely relate to that when I'm trying something and I'm working on developing my new skill. It can take some time and it's nice to hear that you've gone through so much and that you worked so hard and look at how great of a player you are because you were able to invest that time into practicing and learning and, and getting better over time. That's what I like about, about teaching too is that sometimes I think, if I hadn't had somebody kind of saying, maybe you can do this, I never would have, you know, I, we need that encouragement. You mentioned that you have uh, an electric bass, is that correct? That's right. That's right. It's um, the, the electric bass is, again, this is um, an instrument that, you know, I, I kind of gravitated towards, you know, when I was in eighth grade, because I don't. I, I just. I thought it was cool. You sound really passionate about that bass. 
was that the instrument that you picked up and you really tried to focus on a lot when you were a kid? So, um, so this, this instrument, you know, uh, was, was my instrument of choice. And, you know, we start out playing Playing R and B, I, you know, I love the old, old Wilson Pickett stuff. All these funky bass lines that these guys that, that played my, my my electric bass heroes. I really feel like I don't know much at all about the electric bass. Could you tell us a little bit more about the history of it and some different ways that you might use it? I mean, is that something that you actually use in a symphony orchestra? This is very versatile. And I use this uh, with the orchestra sometimes. I'll play when we have a pops concert. We're playing pop tunes. You know, this instrument is 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 really important in that role. Uh, the great producer, um, Quincy Jones, made a comment once. He said, the electric bass was the most important instrument in the last hundred, well, last 50 years. Um, because it's it, it brought it changed the music. All of a sudden, you could hear the bass player. You know, this was invented because because people played the big bass, the double bass. But you know, it's really hard to play. It's hard to play. And so, uh, if you couldn't find a bass player, you know, gee, we're out of luck here. So they thought, well, maybe we can make a bass guitar with frets. And the, the, the first successful bass guitar was the Fender Precision. It was called the Precision because it had frets and you could play the notes with precision as opposed to studying and where is that C? I don't know, is it here, is it? You know, it's really hard to do that. So, you know, Leo Fender, the great genius guitar maker from the late 40s until he died in like 99, he, um, he thought, okay, I'm gonna do this. Now other people had done it before him, but nobody was successful. Nobody made an instrument that caught on like his. So is it really a lot like the other bass that you were playing, the double bass? And can you play just a couple different things for us so we can really hear how it sounds? It's tuned like the big bass. It's tuned E, A, D, G from low to high. The notes are in the same place, only it's smaller. It's, it's about eight inches smaller than the big bass, the double bass. Double bass, your standard string length is about 42. This is 34. So the notes, they're not real close together, but, you know, and I can play it. I can use double bass fingering on this. I can do that, or I can play it like a cello. fingers so that's so I kind of use a combination of both fingerings uh, depends if I'm up here I can use four fingers easily because the notes are close together down here I can I can do it but I gotta stretch stuff so it's 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 pretty cool it's, it's pretty cool if you think of it as a musical instrument like it's four strings it's like a violin you know and it's and we can do a lot of things on this bass so so i like it i mean it's it's part of it's part of what i do yeah you know, and we can also use our thumb Thumpy quality. So we could do all that. So it's it's kind of neat. Wow, Ed, this was so informative. Thank you for sharing both your double bass and your electric bass with us today. 
I think it's pretty safe to say you rock. Thank you.